Welcome to Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, the arena of the supernatural, where supernatural is natural. Our vision is to bring Christ's abundant life, knowledge, and hope to Inanda, then to the whole world, in the form of preaching, teaching, holistic gospel, healing, deliverance, counseling, training, and discipleship. Here we go. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, your past will never define your future. There is always redemption, which means there is always a brighter day. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we do not think that we are better than any other church out there. We are just doing our best to become our best. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we want you to believe in God, but also we want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against any people who do not attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that is pursuing us. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we are committed to serve God and people. We take ownership and account for our decisions, answerable or accountable as for something within one's power. We do what we say we will do. We are learning to serve God with all our hearts and we are learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you are looking for the perfect church, we are not it. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we are part of a global community that is knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we believe that really happened too. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, it's not our church at all, but it is His, and we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and fame, and not for ours. So there's the invitation. You are invited to jump in with your whole heart, at your own pace, and experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, from Drs. Swanem Somi and Tabisilam Somi. Take your seat. I don't think I sell a pansy. I'm for no look on Shonanga Panga. I don't want to waste any time. Nifuna Ungen and Dabe. I just want to get to the context. I came for that. <laughs> I am ready. Nothing I quite a ballaman. Is this the spirit I've come to come for? I want to teach you, brethren, on the 8th of May, we are going to be Hearing what I'm saying, brethren? Yeah, so, I want us to be free and to reach where we are supposed to be. If Nami last week, I could pray for her and she was freed instantaneously. They would have called her on the Sunday. But they were using the correct protocol by calling her on the Monday. She'll explain herself what happened. She now is an employer, employed person. There are many of you that will still get jobs. Do you hear me, brethren? Please just believe me. I'm anointed for this. Don't be doubtful. I've been doing it for a long time. I'm only going to preach for a short while. Because I want to do my job. 
I don't want to talk too much. Even those who are listening on highway radio. I want them to connect right now. We are welcoming them in Jesus name. Even those that are watching on Facebook, there are things that are going to happen now. I came ready. You see, as I'm wearing a black suit and a white shirt, it's going down today. I want you to start seeing things happen. Let my people go. I've come and I've arrived in Egypt to say Tetelana Bantubami. God has assumed that the Lord has allowed him to be able to do it. But now it's about time that he'll feel our fiery arrows. I've come to proclaim today. Let your heart be ready. Say today is today. Ha, my God. Do you hear what I'm saying? You see, the one you who have been struggling with ancestral spirits will take it out today. Nothing is going to get injured and no one is going to get injured. Everyone is going to come out pure. Everyone is going to come out freed. Listen to the verse that I have to do. In Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. 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 Zufundanges Zulu, ten galaxy seventeen. What figure in Azareta sixteen? What figure in Azareta lapo? Why only Wakona? Wangena is in a cocaine and goes Sugulu Sabata, Jengo Gwenza Guake, Wasuguma Ugufunda. Luke chapter four, verse sixteen. When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. Wafiga ngelchanda lilesingi si his boyhood home. La kulela kona oyumfan. Where it says when you grew up, into, imagine going to do things where you were once a boy. Ah, uh, ingzoyenza lento la gui inkere. I'm going to do this kona. thing where I was born and where I grew up. <laughs> I'm telling you. Seventeen. Waniga ingwati ga Isaiah um propheti waivula ingwati wafumana inda ogulochwe guyo uguti. Verse seventeen: The scroll of the of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. Omo ya wengos upesuguam. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is not below me. It is upon you. You see, when something is upon you, have you ever seen it said when the witch, when the sorcerer has been clothed? But today, the spirit of the Lord. The spirit can't climb on top of you without something happening. And when you declare, it could be something that only you feel, but now you're coming to say it. You are going to say the spirit of the Lord. It depends whose spirit is upon you. Some of them have the spirit of the ancestors. But he said, For he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released. And that the oppressed will be set free. And that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Then he rolled up the scroll and handed it to the attendant and sat down. And all of those who are in the synagogue, the eyes stared at him. 
Hey, but Peggy, they're not like Facebook. Even they're on Facebook, they are watching. But la le le, they're not highway radio. They're listening there on on highway. Today, the spirit of the Lord can, cannot be upon you when there's nothing going on. Sometimes it amazes me that people want to be anointed, but to be anointed to go sit at home. To be anointed to just to stay around the house. The anointing cannot come upon you and for you to do nothing. It's the dangerous when the anointing is now upon you. It makes you ill. It makes you insane. It troubles you. There are many people that I know that ask for this anointing when they come to receive that anointing they'll come and receive it but they'll go with that anointing and sit at home they'll become so poor you cannot even imagine because they have already broken the curses but now they've been anointed but now they go with that anointing and sit at home this is it's not the anointing to stay at home. It's not just an anointing for you to be a spectacle. But when the anointing descends upon you, it breaks the yoke. Upon you. It's upon you. It looks like you it looks like It gives you unnatural power. Once it's upon you, it opens your eyes. To see things that other people don't see. When the anointing is upon you, it opens your ears to hear things that other people don't hear. When the anointing is upon you, it unleashes and unravels your mind. Solving king as a to be able to solve people's problems, to be able to see things that people don't see, like your anointing is upon you, even when you were weak and tired, it gives you power and strength. You can't just be laying around with the anointing upon you. You can't just be lazing about with the anointing upon you. You can't be complaining when the anointing is upon you. Once the anointing is upon you, once you open your mouth, things happen. Once the anointing is upon you, once you stand up, there are things that crumble. Once the anointing is upon you, once you open your mouth, there are lips that come out. Once the anointing is upon you, there's a prayer that comes out of you. One day this anointing was on Saul And once it was upon Saul You know what happened? It just came and descended And once it was upon him Next to him There was an axe He grabbed it And then there were many giants By himself Now the anointing was upon him He went directly to the boat And he slaughtered it And he put it into pieces And he did this because of the anointing And they said Give this to the of Israel for those, those who <laughs> <start> <laughs> <coming> <laughs> to me, this is what will happen <laughs> to his flock. <laughs> this is what will happen to his flock. And at that time, Israel was going to be freed. It's amazing that to me that brethren can have the anointing of God but go and be poor with it. Have anointing but you'll be troubled by issues. John even says trying to explain how this anointing is. He says you have the anointing. You don't need anyone to teach you. He's trying to say that the anointing has the fullness of God in it. He's saying that the anointing has an amazing ability. No one can compete with anyone who has the anointing. 
Nina nkaba ngutu kobo logu ipopota na logu imeikapa. Uchi kora bashata rala basata. Besu shalapan. You think anointing is for you to make your face up nice, speak in tongues and then sit down. Lenda la chiwu kobo. This thing called the anointing. Inda kwenzu kutu uchi nomu wa shale kondilo mkwa. Uta isi ingingi laba ntube segue na banga babo nbonke laba babo. Something that even if you're sitting on the corner of the road and silent thing, they will not see anyone else but you. Upagama keku nge ni misi nge misa mesa na pelu sa hambi misi mbalo. You'll be going door to door selling cakes and they'll run out quickly. Ngobu kobo lukwenza ube ne favor na bang. Because the anointing makes you have favor with people. Can I tell you what the anointing does? I don't want to remain too long here in the anointing. Because I want this anointing to work. I want it to free. I want it to raise up today. I want it to anoint today. I want it to release. I want it to break the yoke. I want it to raise today. I want it to release the fog. I can feel it now. It's breaking yokes. There's another lady here. I'll call her a mom because she had children. She was married to her husband. And her husband was a prophet. This prophet, he was anointed. Do you hear this, what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this prophet was anointed. And this prophet passed away. Before the anointing even worked for him. And he left debt for his wife. And he left all of these debts for his wife. And he was buried. And when he was buried, then his debtors came. He said, they said, woman, your husband owed us. Though he was a prophet, he still owed us money. We want our money. The woman said, I don't but have it. Zaku. They said, we'll take your Nabu children. Bazo cover, so you see, these two boys will cover the, the debts of the um, prophet, why no The prophet had anointing, but it didn't work for him. <laughs> it didn't work for him. <laughs> that means he had big debts. They can't take his two sons. If you only owe them a little bit of money. There was no chicken in the yard. There was no dog in that yard. There were just two sons. And I said, we'll take these two boys. And the mother said, just wait a bit. Please just give me a moment. Let me see if there's anything else I can do. Don't take my boys. If you take them, please take them next week. I'm still going to try something. The one that had hired my husband. I'm going to go and try with his colleague. The one that was doing his job. That knows what he was doing. The, mo the mother left and she sought for this prophet. And when, he, when, he when he sought him, he found him. He said, servant of God, my husband, he was a servant of God. He trusted God till the end and served the Lord. But we were poor even so. The person now has come saying that he'll take my children because my husband owes him money. He's not saying that the debt is now clear. But, but now these have become generational. Debts. The father had no debts. Now the mom has debts. Even debt. the children will have See, debt. generation. Now it's a generational thing. Amen. Then he asked. Um, prophet. Then the prophet asked. I don't know if you hear what, what I'm saying. Some prophet. Then the prophet asked. Unan. What do you have? Unan. What do you have? What? And she was quick to say. What is We just have this jar of oil. When people were ill, they would anoint people with it. When they opened a new house, they would anoint that house. With it, but they've been left over. They've never used it. For, they never worked for us, but they were working for other people. 
They never worked for us. The oil never worked for us. He's even left us with debt. What's on prophet? The prophet said, That's right. You're going to do what you were doing already? I just want. I just want. Do you have this? Please go and borrow vessels from your neighbors. Any kind of vessel. And fill them in the house. If you need to call the whole township. And borrow from the from 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 even from Chai Zafa, and even from Nitanzi, even from Mangwe, borrow all the vessels and fill them in the house. And once they're in the house, then close the door. And once you've closed the door, you, mom, take that oil, take that anointing. Your husband is not around to use it now. You're the one who's going to take it. There are women today who are going to take the anointing. The anointing of business. 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 We need the woman to 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 that's a leadership position, man. You take the leadership position. We're eradicating all the deaths now. Our children are going to be the ones who 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 are going to be the Is there someone I'm speaking to today? Do you hear me, brethren? Do you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> he said, woman, take your leadership position. Stop complaining. You are supposed to be gathering things. It's like I'm seeing my mama. Then she stopped school. She has said she has two sons now. What? Praise the Lord. She put things together. And she hustled. Her hands put things together. So she could take us to school. I even went to Bible college with that money. You know, I've been telling you the story. That I went to school from the money, money from the tavern from the Holy Spirit. I even went to Bible college. Speak today. This story. It reminds me something that happened in Africa, where the boys were in prison, basically, and they were slaves. They were oppressed. You see, right now, the people that are open for, for them to have opportunity with women, but men don't in have that position. Many of them are just in, in the tavern. They are in prison. In and many of them are in, in crime. And many of them are rapists right now. They're doing things that are confusing. How can you be a father? How can you be a father of the house like that? Even though your father was bound, that means this thing was going to continue in a cycle for these people to be bound, for them to be oppressed. Do you hear me, brethren? Today, the verse that I read
How is it? It is upon me. Do you hear this? It is upon me. Why is it upon me? For me to proclaim. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. I'm speaking to who? The poor. Those who have had everything taken away from them. Even their jobs. They'll say, look for a job. And you can't find a job. They'll say, if you're going to seek for a job, and you can't no find it, and they'll say, no, because we like to evangelize. So when we go to evangelize, they'll say that they have turned their backs on us. That's the first thing that is said. They said the ancestors have turned their backs on you. Who has turned their back on you? How can they turn their backs on you when they left with nothing? The person that you loved so much, but that person has now turned their back on you. And they say if you want to turn them around, you need to slaughter a cow. They did not even have a chicken. But they want a cow from you. This thing was not thought through clearly. Is that really my mother? The one who's turned her back on me? Now she can only turn back if, she, if I slaughter her cow? With the transport that I give her? You didn't hear me. Please don't be angry at me. Please just listen to me with a sober mind. The one that wants me to turn That's the one who was climbing on the branch of a palm tree. I could easily take it and turn her around with expensive this. But now it's expensive for me to turn her back around. Why is it so expensive now? thousands. Even a cow is that even though a goat costs thousands. But a cow? You're speaking about things that range at about 10,000 rand. Now I must turn you around. And I must, who's now I've impregnated this cow, but, now this but now with this cow, I must make you turn back around. That means I have no future. Because even the job that I'm hired at, I'm entering with you. And in this job, that I'm entering, I even bribed 2,000 to get it. You see how difficult it is for a black person to plan? It's been planned and designed. It's planned that when you came, amen.